Hi guys, some of you want to see me testing the attenuation function of my load boxes. So let's do this today. In the ultimate load box comparison video series, and you can find all links in the description box below, I've tested a bunch of load boxes and some of them support attenuation as well. Generally, there are two different concepts of attenuation, passive and active. A passive attenuator can only reduce the output power of your tube amp in certain steps. An active attenuator usually offers stepless control over the attenuated volume level and is also able to increase the volume because it comes along with a built-in power amp. For testing, I've mic'd my EVH cabinet with a Shure SM57 and to reduce room reflections and to save my ears, I've put some pillows and a blanket in front of the cabinet. As a reference, I've recorded a mid-gain track with my Friedman BE100 Deluxe at system volume level 6 and master at 4, which is pretty loud and another track with system volume level at 1. So we have a significant volume drop of around minus 25 dB, which is bedroom level niveau. The system volume of this particular amp is an overall master volume and promises great tone even at bedroom level without the use of an attenuator. Of course, we will check if this statement is really true. So let's play both tracks. For better comparison, the volume of the tracks are normalized, means what you hear now is on the same volume level even if there was a huge difference in the room. The tracks sound pretty similar, later we will analyze all differences in detail with help of the FabFilter plugin. Next I've put the Fryette power station in between the amp and the cabinet. The Friedman amp is set to high output level at system volume 6. On the power station I've tried to dial in the same volume drop of around minus 25 dB. I've recorded two tracks, the first is the one with the edge deep setting engaged and the second is the one with the flat flat setting. So let's now hear the tracks. For better comparison, the volume level was again normalized in the door. As you could hear, in this case, the flat flat setting is much closer to the unattenuated original. But why? Well, simply spoken, it's because a cabinet is connected and the power station has a tube based power amp. As you may know from my videos of the ultimate load box comparison, a cabinet has some impact on the amp tone because a speaker is an inductive device which sends some voltage back to the power tubes of the amp while operating. You can find more details in episode 2 of the ultimate load box comparison. 
as soon as we engage the edge deep options, we mix the impedance curve of the load box with the impedance curve of the cabinet. And this can lead to an odd result. So my recommendation is to engage the switches only when the power station is used in silent mode, means without a cabinet connected. Let's move on with the next device with a built-in power amp, the tube amp expander from BOSS. Unlike the Froyette power station, the power amp of the tube amp expander is solid state. This also means that the impedance curve of the cabinet has no impact on the amp tone. So we don't have to take care about mixing different impedance curves. However, this also means that the impedance curve of your cabinet is completely decoupled from your tube amp. So what you hear is always the impedance curve of the tube amp expander. That's also why the device has a bunch of options to modify the impedance curve with the rotary resonance and presence switches on the front panel. However, for the test I've used the LMIT high setting only because in my opinion this setting simply sounds best. Next we have the AUX load box from Universal Audio. Even if the device requires power, the attenuation works more like a passive device and has no built-in power amp. For the test the attenuation level of the device is set to 2. That's the rotary switch on the front panel labeled speaker volume. The last device of the test is the Iron Man 2 from Tone King. It's also a passive device without a power amp. For the test the attenuation level is set to minus 28 dB with the rotary switch and two additional switches on the front panel. And by the way, none of the attenuators are sponsored. All devices have been purchased with my own money and I'm not getting paid for making this video. But if you want to support me, please press like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot for this. Now let's compare the frequencies of the original high volume signal with all attenuated recordings. Technically the ideal curve would be a totally flat line, however don't expect this result because the mic has its own frequency range and on higher volume there are more reflections from the floor and the dynamics of the cabinet is different too. So as a reference let's start with the unattenuated signal where only the system volume of the amp was dialed back to 1. Well, that's not bad. There is kind of a high shelf starting at 4 kHz and a low cut starting at 100 Hz. Next we have the Fryette power station in flat flat mode. Again there's a low cut starting at 100 Hz and a flatter high shelf starting at 4 kHz. I would say it looks slightly better than the previous curve. If we take a look at the curve of the BOSS tube amp expander, we can see bigger differences. What stands out is the big hump at around 50 Hz. Next we have the curve of the AUX load box. 
there is a hump at around 100 Hz and kind of a strange high cut starting at 2 kHz. The last curve looks quite different and belongs to the Iron Man 2. There's a big hump at around 150 Hz and a big high shelf starting at 1.5 kHz. The presence switch was set to 0 dB, so there is a way to reduce the high shelf by setting the presence switch to minus 3 or minus 6 dB. Let's now overlay all curves and talk about Harry Fletcher and Wilton A. Munson. These two guys determined graphs that show how loud a sound at one frequency must be in order to be perceived as equally loud as a sound at another frequency. Or simply spoken, on lower volume you need more bass and some more treble to get a more realistic result. And to me it looks like the Iron Man 2 already built in the Fletcher Munson curves to compensate what we hear at lower volume level. Finally here's my rating. First place goes to the Freyette power station. The sound is most accurate and can be customized with the presence and depth controls to compensate the Fletcher Munson effect. Second place is the tube amp expander from Boss. There are 16 options to choose a proper impedance curve, that's nice. However, I don't like that my tube amp isn't able to see the real impedance curve of the cabinet. Third place goes to the Iron Man 2 from Tone King. The attenuation level is not stepless, but there are 18 settings you can choose from. The presence switch on the front panel allows you to tame higher frequencies and I think I should have done this for the recorded track. The last place goes to the aux load box from Universal Audio because it simply sounds too dull. Higher frequencies are not correct. And I don't like that the attenuator can't be completely disabled. Even at the highest speaker volume setting there is a little attenuation. I hope this video helps you to find the right attenuator. However, please keep in mind no attenuator can give you the feel of an unattenuated amp. For a great feel some amount of air has to be moved. That's simply physics. Thanks for tuning in and see you soon on this channel.